Scoob, do you realize where we are? No. Look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. the Falcon Fury. Did you say Ikea? Nope, I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shaggy and Scooby were taken? Yeah. This blue light came down from the sky and beamed them up. I can't, I, I can't breathe. I have to assume that if they were with their friends, they wouldn't have been kidnapped. Okay, can you skip the emotional punishment? What was some guy and what was Scooby and Shaggy? I don't know, but I'd like to shake the hand of whoever created this. And then, you know, throw that hand in prison for trying to kill our friends. You said that we would always be ah! oh. are you, Rafa, lost the Hey! Uh, this mangy stray's coming with me. He's not a stray. Okay, then. What's his name? His name's... Scooby. Middle name? Doobie? Last name? Do. I never knew anybody till I knew you do. Gentlemen, welcome aboard. Are you... This isn't about some guy in a rubber mask. I would have gotten away with this if it weren't for you meddling. Oh. This is about one of us. <laughs> Welcome to the Falcon Fury. Oh, Falcon. Hang on, hang on. Turn on the lights. Where are my balloons, Didi? When I say Falcon Fury, that's supposed to cue the balloons. Oh, great, great timing. You might want to buckle up. Scooby dooby doo. Maybe this can lead us to our culprit. Jinkies! Apparently, he's been stealing Netflix by using his mother's account. <gasps> that is not fair for the rest of us who have to pay for Netflix. You have to pay for Netflix? Here we go! If you want, you can pull over and drop us off here. We'll walk home. <laughs> I guess our new movie is an origin story. Every hero should have one. I want The Rock to play me. Mm, never gonna happen. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to my Scoob movie review. So, um, you might be wondering, <laughs> why another movie review? Well... Uh, I didn't have a lot of time this weekend because I worked all weekend. Um, and otherwise I was tired. But instead of doing the next part of Resident Evil 8, as of right now, because this is releasing around that time, I really wanted to do a movie review for Scoob. Um, this movie currently, as of 5-23-2021... This is the last day, at least, the theater I go to is playing it. But it is the 24th of May. And this is currently playing in theaters. Um, and this is why I want to make this review. If you guys like my com my comments and you're interested in the movie, it probably won't be in theaters for very long. Yes, it's available digitally, of course. But at least in the U.S., it's available in theaters, some theaters currently. And why this is so important to me to make a movie review is for a couple reasons. And let me explain. One, I feel this movie is super underrated. Uh, critics never look at kids' movies and never feel or understand what kids' movies try to do. And they just kind of say, it's a kids' movie, it can't be good. And you may not agree, feel free to... You know, this move, this, there won't be comments on this video because it'll be kid friendly. But, you know, anyway. Um, but this movie had, well, here, let me explain. So, Scooby Doo has had a very, very bad, bad track record with movies. There are about five, four or five Scooby Doo movies that exist that are not animated movies that were straight to DVD release. And I'm including TV movies here. Um, there are two TV movies that are included with this. But the ones we have are two live-action Scooby-Doo movies, Scooby-Doo, which takes place on Zombie Island. Not Zombie Island. 
on uh, Spooky Island, sorry, and Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, which are two movies that played in theaters. Then we have Scooby-Doo. Hold on. And let me see. Sorry. Oh, well, hold on. Let me go to Google. Okay. So we have Scooby-Doo, Two Monsters Unleashed. So we Scooby-Doo, The Mystery Begins. So basically, yeah, I'll start from the beginning. So we have Scooby-Doo, which was made in 2002. Currently, this is available on HBO Max, if you do want to watch it, if you have HBO Max. Scooby-Doo 2, Monsters Unleashed, was released in 2004. Scooby-Doo, The Mystery Begins, which was a um, TV movie. So I am including that because that released on something other than straight-to-video or straight-to-DVD release. Um, and Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster, which was 2010. And that was also a TV movie. And we have a movie called Daphne and Velma, which is rated G. It came out in 2018, and it's available on Hulu. But it doesn't look good, and... It supposedly tells the story of how Daphne and Velma started everything with Mystery Incorporated and none of the other characters are around. And I hate that idea. No offense to women in leading roles or anything. There are plenty of movies with that. You don't mess with the source material. There are some things I'm willing to let slide. I haven't watched the movie. Maybe I'll give it a shot. Maybe I'll just call it a very bad spinoff movie but you know you don't mess with the source material the scooby gang met each other as kids at the very least keep that and you're not going to tell me daphne and velma alone started everything because that's not how it went i i don't know if i'd be as as upset if scooby and shaggy started everything because i think they technically kind of already gave that kind of I mean, each, each uh, it's kind of complicated. Anyway, moving on. And the last Scooby-Doo movie that we have uh, that was either TV or scheduled release is Scoob, which released last year and is available on HBO Max. But I want to say that if you are able to go to the theater and watch it, if you like my review or if you like the movie, go watch it in a theater. Because the movie won't be there for long. Uh, probably the rest of this week and maybe next week if we're lucky. Because it's not doing that well. Which is not a shocker. I'll go into that. But if you want to support it, support it. And that's what I did. And yeah. So. Now. When's the last time we had a Scooby-Doo movie actually in theaters? Well, as I already stated, Curse of the Lake Monster and The Mystery Begins are both TV movies. With also some pretty bad looking Scooby-Doo CGI, but I like the movie for what it is. Because, and I've been saying this to some people uh, that I know, um, us Scooby-Doo fans can't be picked. Because we don't get enough Scooby-Doo content. But then you say, well, Doom, what are you talking about? We have... Also, yeah, I don't normally refer to myself in the third person like that. I tend to not do that in case I ever change my channel name. If for some odd reason I've changed my channel name in the future and you hear me calling myself Doom, it's because my channel name is Doom Maestro. Or used to be. I don't know. This is only under the assumption that I change my channel name in the future, which I don't plan on doing. So if I don't, then this is just a funny a little skit that I put in here for no reason. Anyway, moving on. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, we can't be picky. Uh, but you say, anyway, yeah, I know where I'm at. So I was like, Doom. What about all the movies? There's a movie every single year that releases straight to DVD that's animated. What about those? And yeah, we do get Scooby-Doo content. But most of those movies are under 
an hour and a half. Like Scooby Doo and the Goblin King, hour fifteen. Scooby Doo and the Cyber Chase, which is fantastic, by the way, hour twenty nine. Fantasaur, hour seventeen. Alien Invaders, hour twenty. Scooby Doo and Batman the Brave and the Bold, hour fifteen. Lock this monster, hour fourteen. Scooby Doo, Blow Out Beach Blast, hour eighteen. And the last one, I'm trying to figure out, and there was a Blue Falcon one too, which came out in 2012, but it's an hour and 18. There's very few that are actually hour 30. Uh, Scooby-Doo Halloween, Scooby-Doo, hour 20, not rated, 2020, and actually I think all of them are not rated. So, again... So yeah, I mean, those movies are fine, but there's a different presence to movies in theaters and movies that get ratings. I guarantee you all the animated ones that went straight to DVD are less known. You will get less people knowing those than you will get people knowing the two live-action Scooby-Doo movies. Even some of the classics like uh, uh, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island, which is a fantastic movie. And if you're one of those who's for... Um, it not just being someone in a mask, you'll really like that one. Uh, I do have a review for that. It's just on my Discord because I haven't had time to edit it since I made it and I put a lot of effort into that edit. And I don't really feel like editing it down at all, so I just uploaded it, uploaded it to Google Drive, which I guess could be an issue in the future. But I uploaded it to Google Drive and put a link on my Discord. Um, for the people who are in the 152 week sub special channel or the Twitch sub prime or t not Twitch sub prime, just Twitch sub channel um, for the videos. But anyway, the last time a live uh, a movie, a Scooby Doo movie was in theaters was in 2004. So in four years from now, so in 2020. Five? So three years. Sorry, not even four years. Three years. It will have been a full 20 years since we had a Scooby-Doo movie in theaters. Well, now I can't say that, right? So it's been about 17 years since the last Scooby-Doo movie was in theaters. Because we have Scoob in some theaters now. But here's the thing. And I know I'm I know I'm not getting to the movie review yet. Don't worry. I'll get there. I spent 10 minutes talking about this, but I'll get to the movie review. Don't worry. Scoob has an issue. It released digitally May 15th, 2020, I believe. It was May 2020. And either people watched it already, bought it and watched it, or people weren't interested. And now we have a dilemma. It's playing in theaters, but no one wants to go to watch it. And I truly believe that's why. Because this is a kids' movie, and there are not many kids' movies playing in theaters right now. I think pretty much the only one is Ryan the Last Dragon, which, to be fair, is far outstayed its welcome um, at this rate. But anyway, it's fine. Um, and now to get on with the actual Scooby movie review or Scoob movie review, there are a lot of odd odd choices they made in this movie but if you look the baseline scooby-doo everything is there and as much as i like some reviewers uh one of them being chris stuckman is a fantastic movie reviewer and i normally agree with him but he said that this movie was so far from what scooby-doo was in his review and i far from disagree with that this is scooby-doo scooby-doo i mean things are gonna change scooby-doo is just one of the things to change i mean we just got a new saw movie called spiral recently that's changed i'm not going into details but that's changed you know we are getting things that are changing, making more modern, changing how the movies work, changing how a lot of things work beyond the movies even. Video games, real life. 
things change and we're not going to be able to keep series the same forever. And again, us Scooby-Doo fans, actual Scooby-Doo fans, not people who review the movies but never watched Scooby-Doo when they were younger or didn't care for it, even if they did watch it. The people who really care about Scooby-Doo. And I'm sure a lot of people were upset when this movie came out, too. I mean, for Pete's sakes, depending on how you feel, Simon Cowell's in it. He has a cameo at the beginning of the movie. He's mentioned two times more throughout. And then there's a semi-cameo toward the end of the movie. So, you know, that's kind of weird. Zac Efron playing Fred is also weird. But for all you Scooby-Doo fans out there, Frank Welker, who normally does, I think, Fred and Scooby in most of the animated stuff, does Scooby in this still. I feel he is the only Scooby-Doo, pretty much. The only one that could that could do Scooby for me. And this story, I feel, is much deeper than what it is. Maybe it was just in the mindset I was in at the time that I first watched it, but... This movie is a friendship movie, but not your average friendship movie. I won't go into super spoilers, so no end movie spoilers here, but it, I always cry. I'm tearing up right now. I always cry at the end of this movie. I cannot not cry at the end of this movie. But it's a Scooby-Doo movie, so just be aware. It's PG. You know, certain things have to happen in kids' movies because it, you know, but I always, sorry, I always cry. It, it, so many weird choices were made, as I said, and sorry, I'm kind of going all over the place. I'm going to back up a step. Um, yeah, I always cry with this movie. And that's not a bad thing. And honestly, it was kind of... It was surreal sitting in that movie theater. or Actually, I've, I've watched it like two times at the theater already. Sitting in the theaters, watching watching Scoop. Because the first time I watched that movie... And for me, it's odd to not watch movies in theaters. I only do it absolutely if the movie doesn't go to theaters. So Willy's Wonderland, but but even Willy's Wonderland was different than what Scoob was, you know. Scoob wasn't the same thing as what Willy's Wonderland was for me. And I was I you sit in your room and you watch it and I'm like it's not anything compared to what it is to sit in that movie theater and to watch a movie on the big screen. And I got very lucky. It was in a big theater too. Which you'd think an older movie like this wouldn't be in that big theater. Now I don't I have no idea why it's not doing well. I'm gonna be fully honest, it's a kid's movie. You know? And Ryan the Last Dragon is also available digitally now as well, and in like a week or two will be available on Disney Plus for free. So I don't I don't know why, you know. But still. But anyway, more to the story. Um, this, as I said, is a friendship film. It starts with Scooby and Shaggy Young. And a very funny sequence, in my opinion, where Shaggy's on his phone trying to choose some music to play. And uh, he only chooses uh, songs that talk about being lonely. Mr. Lonely, or one is the loneliest number that you'll ever do. Two can be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. Sorry, I like that song. They it wasn't super long in the movie, but I I find it funny. I find this movie extremely funny. I laughed at most of the jokes in this movie. Um, and it's, it's there, there's another really weird thing with Scoob. And I'm going to be honest, there are some weird things I don't understand. So what Scooby-Doo normally does is all of the R's, no, all the S's, 
he says is ours. So that's where we get Ruby Ruby Doo or Ruby Doo or you know stuff like that. You know, which also is kind of weird because there's a joke which I will say the the villain's name is Dick Dastardly, um, which also is a Hanna Barbera character. There's a couple of Hanna Barbera characters spread out through this. That's one of them. You have Blue Falcon, played by Mark Wahlberg, which might also be his first animated movie, as well as Captain Caveman, which I guess could be minor spoilers, but I'm and it's not really spoilers because they're not. The only one that's super into the plot is Blue Falcon, but if you're this far into the video already, you already saw that in the trailer that's before this, so that's not a spoiler. Um, and Dick Dastardly is the villain, which really wasn't shown in the trailer, to be honest, but still, I'm going to talk about the villain. And there's a joke, which I guess some people could call corny, but I find it funny, especially because it's a PG-rated film. The villain's name is Dick Dastardly. Well, uh, Scooby comes across Dick at one point later in the movie, and uh, they get into a conversation for some reason, and a a little bit of a conversation, I guess. Not a full conversation, a little bit. But he says, he's like, uh, Mr. Dastardly. And he's like, please, call me Dick. He says, okay, Rick. No, Dick with a D. Rick with a D. Dick. Rick. Dick. 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 And then Scooby runs out. I didn't do it very good job I paused and I didn't make it funny but um my question is here he says I don't know if he was saying Rick on purpose maybe he was saying Rick on purpose but if he wasn't he was actually like he couldn't say dick I mean also to be honest they wouldn't want Scooby-Doo to say dick anyway even if it is a name which I appreciate them not doing. Would he even be able to say D? Because that means the R replaces the D. So he shouldn't be able to say Rick with a D. You know, it's like if he were to say Rut Row Shaggy or Rut Row Raggy or Raggy with an S. You know, because it's not that. Just when he says full words, he can't say an S. It'd be it end up being raggy with an R. Cause he can't say an S. You know what I mean? Little little things like that kind of throughout the movie are kind of like a little bit spotty. But I mean, it's okay. I don't really have any concern on that front. Um, the villain's okay. Not great, but also not bad. There have been plenty of worse villains in movies before. Fully honest. Um, and what else do we got? Oh yeah, Zac Efron plays Fred. Which is kind of weird. I'll be honest. Um, I like the music in the movie. Oh, and his name. Okay. His name is... Scooby-Dooby-Doo? That's, that's the name they give him in the movie. And there's a very terrible joke toward the beginning of the movie where the cop's chasing Scooby down, and when Shaggy says, what's his name? And then the, the cop asks him what his name is because uh, he's uh, Scooby supposedly a stray and he's questioning Shaggy on what if he's not a stray, what's his name? And he says snacks at first because uh, he has a box of uh, Scooby snacks on the ground. And then he changes it to Scooby and he says middle name Dooby, last name Do. And then the cop's like, oh, well, I guess if, if if the dog has a middle name, then he's not held for damages. Uh, I don't like it, but then the laws or something like that. And I was just, I'm like, okay. <laughs> That's a very weird plot point to allow the movie to move forward. 
but also I don't know I don't think Scooby's name is Scooby Dooby Doo. Um, I believe that in the TV shows, some of them at least, he was adopted by the Rogers family. Because there's also a very weird subplot that Scooby Doo is the descendant of a very long line of, um, uh, 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 descendant of a dog from a long time ago. I'll say that much, and that leads into spoilers towards the end of the movie, so I'm not going to go too much into that. But I don't think this is too weird. It is a weird subplot, but we've seen weirder in Scooby Doo movies, real creatures, you know. Uh, kiss coming into the world of Scooby-Doo. I find that kind of weird because that's like crossing over real life with fictional life. But more or less, we've seen supernatural things before. And this doesn't have to be canon in, you know, the, the TV show universe of Scoob. This can just be a spinoff Scoob movie. I mean, that's the thing. That's what they do, you know? But I enjoyed this movie. Again, I'm fully honest. I had fun. I enjoyed it. And I would recommend you go to check out out in the theater while you can. Because, again, this probably won't ever come back. Because it's kind of not worth, you know, if it's not going to do well now, you know, what's the point in them bringing it back to theaters in the future? It, it's not. It's not worth it. I mean, nowadays, we don't even bring back movies when sequels come out. You know, people don't, the companies don't bring back, we used to be like, you know, if Quiet Place Part 2, instead of releasing next week, had released a couple years ago, would have been like, oh, Quiet Place 1 and 2 double feature, but even before the whole Rona thing happened, uh, at least I hope I'm saying that right, um, we, like, we, we didn't get double features of movies. The closest thing we got was like some AMC locations, which I'm glad I didn't go to because it's freaking crazy, did like a complete Avengers marathon for all the Avengers movies leading up to Endgame, which was insanity and it was probably very expensive and very tiresome because they were like, oh, well, you know what you can do? You can go sleep to the movies you don't like. I mean, technically you're not wrong in two and a half hours. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thinking about sleep apparently has me yawning. But I I enjoyed this movie. I don't I don't know really what else to say. It was it was refreshing to see a movie that I I enjoyed so much on the big screen and as I said before I kind of had some personal stuff going on with friendships and it the movie hit me harder. I don't know if that's why I like it more just because of the timing of when it happened, but it was it's it's a very, you know, very heavy friendship aspect to the movie. And again, I I personally feel it has a very sad ending. Well, not full ending, partial ending. I can't really spoil it, so if you're wondering how the movie ends, I, I, I'm not spoiling it for you. But I do cry at the end, I'll just say that much. And that's okay. That is what it is. But I'm very happy that, we're, that it's getting some time in theaters at least. Because also, holy moly, I'm on Google, and whatever this... Phoenix Theaters... Has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight showings of of the movie today on a Monday, ten a.m., eleven a.m., twelve o five p.m., one o five p.m., two p.m., two ten p.m. Sorry, three ten p.m., four twenty p.m. Ah, four twenty, five. Sorry, that was <laughs> bad. Five fifteen p.m. and then AMC has a seven p.m. and that's it. Wow. But, and here, I I also want to go on to here, and what I want to do is I want to look up Scoob's rating on, uh, not soon, 
Not Scoon. Okay. So let's see what the ratings are for this movie. Like uh, Rotten Tomato wise. 47% with 148 reviews for critics and 54% with over a thousand plus reviews for audience. And let me see what it says is the reason for audience. Um, for a modern reboot, Scoob feels instantly dated, and its only con contribution to the Scooby-Doo mythos is a fuddling, lame backstory to how he got his name. I think that's far from accurate because Scooby Doo is you don't Scooby Doo was never about like insane stories that connected things. It was about mysteries, you know, them solving mysteries. And also, there's like an almost shot to shot recreation of the original opening from I think the original TV show of Scooby Doo as like the the opening kind of transition from when they're kids to teens closer to adults and there's a lot of scooby-doo like the animated like the movie style like you know clashing sounds you know and stuff like that that was from like the cartoons and such a scooby-doo that they put in it feels it makes it feel like a very good scooby-doo movie grow scooby-doo isn't supposed to grow he's supposed to cower and get the munchies and that title Scooby-Doo isn't supposed to grow. This person's a top critic, and they just told me that Scooby-Doo's not supposed to grow. So Scooby-Doo's supposed to stay a cowardly little pup forever. No offense, but offense. That's stupid. Um... The Great Dane's big screen return has murderous robot bowling pins, escapades, and abandoned amusement parks, and exciting airborne chase sequences, but nowhere near the joke rate an enduring character like Scooby D Scoob demands. It's a better review, and I can't say that I couldn't see that point of view. A pretty forgotten animated flick, highly disagree, that wouldn't be out of place with the dozens of straight-to-DVD Scoob movies pumped out every year. But that's good. Because that's what Scooby is. That's all we get. So if it's just a bigger version of that. People annoy me. It's needlessly busy featuring chases upon chases and cameo roles for other Hannah Barrera properties. Step forward. Dick Dastardly voiced by Jason Isaacs. Yeah. I mean it felt like a way for them to throw a bunch of Hannah Barbera characters together on a screen but that's fine if that's what it takes not all movies need superheroes and scooby-doo sure doesn't full review in spanish well i don't need to read your full review in spanish because there actually has been a blue falcon uh t not tv movie but straight to dvd release movie or slash streaming that uh, was about the Blue Falcon. They have met before, so this is not anywhere near uncommon to happen in a Scooby-Doo film. film. Scooby's messages should reach children just fine, but there is enough here to appease adults. I agree. You... <sighs> it's not... Going into this movie, don't expect it to be this award-winning... Because kids movies don't win awards like movie of the year awards and I, I don't mean you know soul that was one of the very few animated movies that came out last year which I don't know how soul got nominated for an Oscar anyway because I thought that it had to play in theaters 
to be nominated for an Oscar. So maybe Soul was played in some theaters, but it definitely wasn't played in theaters publicly, that's for sure. Um, But it's not going to be this movie of the year thing. It's it's going to be a movie you just enjoy for the sake of enjoying. You know, I mean, I, I talk about that a lot, but and it's only 93 minutes long, for Pete's sakes. Throw in a horrific rendering Simon Cow cameo, aim gener- generally cheap looking animation, and the movie becomes the stiff stuff of nightmares. Okay. Scoob is a film that sadly does little to improve over the live action films. The animated style was the best way for this series, but this is not the correct storyline. Um. Again, a lot of people like the live-action Scooby-Doo movies, so if you don't like it, maybe you're in the wrong type of movie-watching genre here. The weird thing about Scoob is that it sort of feels like the sequel to a film that I haven't seen. It feels like there was supposed to be a Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe. I can understand that, actually. Yeah, you know what? I can understand that a lot. If they say, because other than the first 10 minutes, this really isn't a mystery movie. It's a superhero movie with Scooby-Doo characters tagging along. And honestly, it's actually kind of correct. Um, there is mystery elements to it, but they have to kind of even add in a weird unmasking toward the end of the movie. Because that's right. It's more of a superhero film after afterward. Which I guess I can understand then more why people didn't like it. But again... We kind of have to just deal with what we get. Hating on a movie, I mean, yeah, you can say, yeah, this is not good. I mean, honestly, I enjoyed it. Otherwise, I wouldn't say I enjoyed it. But we're not going to get anything if we don't, you know, support the movies that they're putting out. And some people might say, well, then that's good. Let's get nothing over something. But I say let's get something over nothing. Because I want to watch more Scooby-Doo movies in theaters. Even if it's mediocre quality. It's not like we get, again, top tier award winning Scooby-Doo movies here. They're enjoyable. They have the characters I like no matter who voices them. Even though I have my preferences, of course. But still. So let's see. So yeah, I think that's about it. I'm going to read on this. It, streaming, May 15th, 2020. Hour, 34 minutes. Um, yeah. I I really enjoyed this movie. I will get a, give it a... 8 out of 10, a 4 out of 5 star, and like a 90%. Again, this is mostly enjoyment. Yet, you know, someone might say, well, your Army of the Dead review that you just did, you were more critical on the flaws. Yeah. Yes, I was. But I also don't have an investment in the zombie genre as much as other people do. And I'm going to be honest. If you do watch that movie review, I don't know why all the flaws stick out to me the way that they did. And maybe I didn't talk a lot about them there, but I talk about the flaws when I talk about that movie. I talk about the flaws in that movie quite a bit. And I'm sorry that I'm yawning so much. I'm trying to wrap up my thoughts. So, but anyway, I highly appreciate everyone watching. I really enjoy the movie Scoob. I hope that you guys will give it a shot too. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next video. Goodbye. Oh, oh, it's about to start. You ready? Ready. Popcorn? Butter. Nachos? Cheese. Fruit beer with red licorice straw? Right here. <laughs> Maybe it's time we made our new movie. Good idea, Scoob. But first we need a trailer. Oh, oh, can you do the trailer guy voice? Hmm. Well, let me give it a shot. <laughs> In a world destroyed by evil. Discover the epic origin story of the greatest team of heroes. 
in the history of mystery. <laughs> Not bad. Nailed it. This mangy stray's coming with me. He's not a stray. Okay, then. What's his name? His name's... Scooby. Middle name? Doobie? Last name? Do. <laughs> <laughs> you said that we would always be Without you, I feel lost at sea I love it. The darkness I'll never I take you off. Like the wind <laughs> we be wild <laughs> Uh, maybe don't do that again. I'm Fred. This is Velma. Hi. And that's Daphne. Hey. I'm Shaggy. And this is Scooby-Doo. Nice to meet you. Trick or treat. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shaggy and Scooby were taken? <laughs> Do you realize where we are? No. Look around, man. The clean, modern aesthetic, the cool blue color palette. We're in Ikea. The Falcon Fury. Did you say Ikea? Nope. I said Falcon Fury, just like you. Maybe this can lead us to Scooby and Shaggy. Trace amounts of mustache oil, 12-year-old scotch. Ugh, is the bad guy my dad? 